What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Welcome to the Dodgers Nation post game show. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Thanks for rocking with us out of the Dodgers. Get the dub. They beat the Rockies by a final score of 11 to 2. They improved to 97 and 60 on the year. First game wasn't. We wasn't doing much on offense. It was it says someone says the glitch? Rob Marvin, Dodgers all day. Keep it, fix it. Oh yeah, a little is there a glitch here. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, DJ Pepe? I'm here with Dylan. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure what's up with this glitch. Let me restart the stream. Unless it's okay. Is there any issue with the stream? Someone said glitch. So I'm not sure. What up, Alicia Jones? We got what up, DMAC? Outman is a total stud. Dodgers, good night, DMAC, and everyone. What's up, Doug? Ryan O'Ryan oh, Montaz here. What up, guys? Let me just make sure this stream is going just fine before we proceed here. I'm not sure what's been up with that. Sounds good. Okay, awesome. So we're good to go. So yeah, thanks for rocking with us, guys, out of the Dodgers. Get the win. Lots to discuss tonight because I think the big takeaway is these young Dodgers pitchers were fantastic. They were outstanding today. A combination of Ryan Pepio and Bobby Miller. Just a little bit lagging that goes back to normal. Okay, let me just restart the stream. I'm not really sure what's going on here, guys. So I'll restart the stream just to make sure everything is going okay. So give me one second. What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Welcome to the Dodgers Nation post game show. Let's try this one more time. Not sure why it was glitchy, but thanks for rocking with us here on the Dodgers Nation post game show. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And we've got a lot to get into on this one, but we're going to celebrate another Dodgers win. How about those young studs for your boys in blue today? Game one, Ryan Pepio, he was outstanding. He absolutely shoved. He was great. Uh, that changeup was outstanding. The first game, he goes six innings, allowed five hits, one run, nine strikeouts, one walk. And then the nightcap, Bobby Miller goes seven innings, had nine punch outs, a career high, no walks, two earned runs. Michael Grove, he pitched well. Those three combined for 14 and thirds innings, allowed just three runs. And I'm telling you, there's no doubt about it at this point, Bobby Miller is your game one starter. That's him. He's the ace. We no, Clayton Kershaw is a legend. We understand that. This guy's a walking statue, a first bound Hall of Famer. But right now, Bobby Mill, you need as your game one starter. If you need him in game five, we don't want to have him in game one. Bobby Miller, there is no doubt about it. He is going to be on the bump in game one. I would be surprised if he was. We're going to break down their outings. We're going to talk about this Dodgers team, who in the first game, they did not have any offense. Really, we'll talk about that little base running blunder there with Dino Ebel. Mookie Betts and Austin Barnes will talk about that. We'll talk about Ryan Pepio, who I think has solidified himself as someone who there is no doubt about. It. He deserves a prominent role in this postseason mix, whether it be as someone who follows up an opener, someone who comes in there as a starter. Ryan Pepio is nasty. Ryan Pepio, we have something. What up, D-Max father? Been saying it for the last month. Bob Miller is your game one starter. By the way, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel, the number one Dodgers post game show here on YouTube. All also, number one Dodgers YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe so you will be eligible for our giveaways. We just gave away a brand new authentic Mookie Betts jersey valued at over $350. We got some big giveaways coming up autographs and jerseys and baseballs, all kinds of cool stuff. And as long as you are subscribed, you have those notifications on, you will be eligible, so eligible for those giveaways. But yeah, let's start with game one. By the way, shout out to everyone out there who watched all both games, who watched game one in game two i know i'm probably in the minority here but yeah i think 
that today what was most impressive just kind of my first take here was yes the Rockies are a bad team yes the Rockies are a team that's one of the worst in Major League Baseball but Acuna John we got John Blaze here guys you guys let's have an after party how about a block party for John Blaze we got uh you blocked but how about the fact that you have those two outings in Coors Field, in the fifth ring of hell, in the DMV of Major League Baseball, because that's how bad it is, right? I mean, you're talking about two young pitchers going in there that still have the depth, still have the feel for their stuff. And I thought Ryan Pepio was so impressive with that changeup. And he was just on it all game long. He struck out a career-high nine in his six innings, didn't allow a run until his final batter of the game when Nolan Jones hit that home run on a full count right there in the seventh inning. And in Pepio, he induced 19 swings and misses. Check out how dirty this changeup is. This is a nasty changeup here for Ryan Pepio. I mean, that is just nastier. Nastier than a gas station bathroom. Nastier than a porta potty at a music festival. That thing is just icky. I mean, that. look, I've got to see that again. Look at that. Uh, more Pepio in your stepio. Just filthy nastiness. And that is the pitch. It was getting all the hype. That is the pitch they were talking 80 grade at the minor league level that so many people were talking about where last year it wasn't effective. Now he's got that feel for it. He's got more tumble to it, working it down the zone, has more command, has more confidence in it, and you are seeing the results. And that is big time. 19 swings and misses. It was four, tied for fourth most by a Dodgers pitcher in a game this season. 16 of those 19 swings and misses came via that changeup. That changeup is special. That changeup is going to make Ryan Pepio a wealthy man. And after missing the first three months of the season, he was on the IL with a strained intercostal muscle. Pepio has pitched in seven games this year. Seven games this year for Pepio since he's been back. He's been the bulk guy in each appearance, but has only made three starts. And in those three starts, in those seven games combined a 185 ERA and 39 innings of work with 35 punch outs to four walks let me say that one more time in his seven games a 185 ERA 39 innings of work 35 punches to four walks I think there's zero doubt about it Ryan Pepio is going to factor in in a major way for this Dodgers pitching plan whether it be following an opener whether it be someone who starts a game he is absolutely nasty and I want to ask you guys on a scale of one to ten how high are you on Ryan Pepio I interviewed him a week before he was active and I said look yeah, I need some perfect games out of you because you're my rookie of the year pick. I picked him as my rookie of the year. Yes, that might have been because he was on my show, so I want to make him feel good. But still, I believe in this kid. I always have, always will because of his work ethic, because of his talent. This guy wants it. He's a dog. Not enough people were talking about Pepio early in the year. Adam is my rookie of the year. Who knows? Maybe if he goes the wire, he's not about rookie of the year. If he had started this season, maybe he's in the mix for Cy Young. Like, okay, let's not get crazy here, but he's been most impressive for the Dodgers. And let me know down below how do you want to see him use in the postseason we got a pepio 10 from diane schroeder d max father gives him a 10 lance jennings freddie freem was not going to be denied in getting another double yeah of course once you saw that freddie dance happen you know that double is a lock in his 58th double of the year for fredericks of hollywood and how about this the fact that the dodgers they were quiet with the bats in the first game second game they score 11 runs on 18 hits and only two extra base hits of those 18 and both were from Freddie Freeman. He got the double late in the game and then in the sixth inning, he had a two-run home run after a Taylor walk. That was that was his 28th of the year, I believe, for Freddie Freeman. Let me make sure I check that. But yeah, Freddie Freeman was just fantastic once again and this is someone who's special and he's having really the best year of his career statistically across the board. That's how good he is. Like I said, he's baseball's version of fine. Well, I know his 27th home run of the year. Sorry, I was working off the top of my head there. Gave him an extra one there. So 27th home run of the year for Freddie Freeman. It'd be nice to see him get to 30 home runs. I remember talking to Freddie Freeman during spring training and one of his goals kind of like off the record was he wanted to hit for more home runs even though he says that he has an all fields approach and he wants to go up there and just put together good at bats still hey you're seeing someone in Freddie Freeman who last year led the league and on base percentage this year that's even better last year he had a phenomenal year led the league with 199 hits today 
205 hits. I mean, this guy, more hits than the Beatles, man. Bre Freddie Freeman's unbelievable. We should thank our lucky stars every single day that the Braves just did not give him that contract and he fell into the Dodgers' laps. And to me, Freddie Freeman, I'm going to give my Dodgers dog of the game. Dodger dog of the game. Bobby Miller's a close second, too, but I love Bobby. We'll talk about Bobby Miller in a second here because I have a lot of thoughts on Bobby Miller. We got like seeing the Dodgers scoring without homers. Anthony Keene, I'm all in on the young arms. Bobby Ice about to become a star. Mad bum kind of run. That's a fire take. Fire take. By the way, I'm looking for that Hornitos comment of the game presented by our friends over at Jim Beam and Hornitos. If I, if I see that, you're going to see this. James for Dodger, dog of the game. That's from Hector you Ramirez. So, yeah, I thought James Outman definitely had himself a really good game and a game that you wanted to see him have. We need the young rookies who are already going to be dealing with a lot when you consider you're breaking in the bigs this year, right? You had 16 rookies total for the Dodgers play this year. Nine of them made their rookie debuts. Well, on top of just playing for a team with World Series aspirations with a standard like the Dodgers, you're going to be playing in the postseason for the first time. So James Alman, who's had himself an above-average season at the plate, he's improved defensively all year long. He's really looked apart this year. James Alman has been going through a little bit of a slump of late, so it's good to see him have a solid night tonight because that's what you want. You want all these guys to be feeling good at the box, feeling good at the plate. You want them to take some momentum into the postseason. And James Altman heading into tonight's game was 6 for his last 44, and tonight a much, much better night at the plate. James Altman goes 4 for 6. Fours for six for James Alman did score two runs, lifted that batting average to 247. And that's what you want to see him going up there and just getting his bat on the ball because he's strong. And when he hits the ball, good things happen. And it's just about him getting quality contact and good things are going to happen. He will get the results. He gets into trouble when he's out there trying to slug. You see the swing getting a little big. His mechanics will get a little bit out of whack. Once they're consistent, that's what you want to see. Because here's the thing about James Alman. He looks like caveman but he doesn't play like he looks like Tarzan but he doesn't play like Jane right he plays like Tarzan he's someone who is just an absolute joy to watch on the baseball field he's someone that has brought it all season long he's been consistent he's been healthy and yeah it's been a great rookie campaign for James Alvin but here let's go down below in the comment section we'll keep talking about this game and I have some thoughts on the first game as well. Just continuing to recap the first game and let you know about Caleb Ferguson. Because Caleb Ferguson, I am starting to worry about him. I'm starting to have some concerns about Ferguson. Give me get your, let me get your thoughts on Ferguson. Got, I love him. Love me some outlets from Diane Schroeder. Lance Jennings, support Dodgers Nation. Smash that like button. Thank you for a great channel supporting the Dodgers. Lance Jennings. Yeah, definitely hit that like button for your Los Angeles Dodgers. They get their 97th win of the season. I'm definitely happy about this. 97 and 60, but uh, if you guys know, 97 was my preseason wins prediction, so I'm the biggest Dodgers fan there is, but I need nothing but losses for the rest of the year so I can look like a smart guy. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm glad this team is exceeding expectations. When I said 97 earlier in the year, I was being labeled a homer. Caleb looks shaky from Anthony King. Craig Osterberg, Outman is very fast. Yeah, definitely one of the faster players on the team. The sprint speed is there. It's Bobby's World from Juice Narrows. That's a fire take from Juice Narrows. By the way, if I see any trash talk, you're going to see one of these. Finish. Finish him. Anything kind of sus, you're going to see one of these. Bruh. But, yeah, let's talk some Caleb Ferguson, who in the first game, he definitely looked shaky to start things off. He got roughed up. He opened the game for the seventh time this season, third time in his last seven games, third time in the last seven games, and he still has yet to have a clean first inning in any of those starts. So he has not put together one clean inning in any of those opener situations. And before Tuesday, he allowed only two runs in six innings despite those 11 base runners. So he had done a nice job getting out of jams and being able to execute with traffic on the base pass. But today was a different story. Fergie allowed a walk, a single, a double to the first three batters he faced. All three scored. The last coming on another single by Montero. That ended Ferguson's day after being able to record just two outs. And Fergie got just one swing strike on the 18 pitches that he threw and he didn't strike out any of his six batters that he faced so look September the strikeout numbers and the swing and miss had been there in September 
He allowed one run on eight and thirds innings with a 38.7 strikeout rate. So those are encouraging numbers. I don't know if you just want to chop this one up to it's Coors Field. Didn't have his field. We know that's the fifth ring of hell. We know that uh, it's something that some pitchers deal with. They don't have their best results. But on the flip side, his teammates seem to have success. But, yeah, on a scale of 1 to 10, what's your concern level about Caleb Ferguson? Max father, Caleb Ferguson cannot get three outs. Shaky, that's an understatement from 275. Vet, RLTW. Mac, you would never root for the Dodgers to lose. Of course not, Diane Schroeder. Uh, Strider, here you 120. Mac, I know the season is almost over, but I'm cheering for Freeman to get 60 doubles. It hasn't happened. Hasn't been done since 1936, I think. Also, I am worried about Will Smith. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that is something that uh, that you want to see. Of course, you want to see history. You want to see Freddie Freeman get those 60 doubles, and hopefully it happens. If it doesn't, I'd be definitely shocked because he's someone who puts in the work. He's someone that has absolutely – gotten the max out of this season and it'd be great to see him make history with the Dodgers right it'd be great to see him do something that has been done since 1936 since Charlie Geringer and Joe Medwick had 60 doubles I think it's funny everyone says about Charlie Geringer at 60 but Joe Medwick also had 64 in 1936 now he's two doubles shy of becoming the first player with 60 doubles in a season and last week he became one of just four players in big league history to post 25 plus home runs, have 50-plus doubles and 20-plus stolen bases in a season. So he's making history. He's having a great year. The Dodgers got peak Freddie. I think it'll go down as one of, if not the best, signing for Andrew Friedman. And what more can you say about the guy? He is someone that played well in the postseason last year. It wasn't Freddie Freeman's fault, and I think he's going to bring that momentum into the postseason and really help carry this team. We got D-Mac Wilson has a rough September. Will Dave Roberts consider moving him out of the third and maybe bat lower like five or six? Strider, here you 120. If you saw the last show, we spent a good 10, 15 minutes on that. And that was basically what I said the Dodgers should do. I think taking the pressure off of being in the three hole there is something that could benefit him. And it's not that he's playing poorly, right? I mean, obviously, he hasn't been the same hitter in the second half of the season post the All-Star break. But I think it's more so who they have now. And that man is J.D. Martinez, who won Player of the Week, who's been fantastic. It was a Someone who has a track record and a history of being excellent in the postseason, a 987 career postseason OPS. So I think that's the guy I want to see in the three hole there. If you look at at Will Smith hitting 188 in September, 188 with a 617 OPS. Two doubles, one home run, and one triple. So four extra base hits and 64 at-bats. You go even further back in August, he had 255 with a 715 OPS, had four home runs and four doubles. And then further back, July, 269, 726 OPS. He hasn't had an OPS above 800 in a month since June. So it's been a while. He doesn't look like himself at the plate. I think this has been a very taxing year for him, especially when you consider early in the season having Austin Barnes be up there with one of the worst hitters in the league as far as overall productivity. He's played better of late. But I think you're seeing also the effects of the DH situation where J.D. Martinez locked into that DH role. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Will Smith. I think that he's someone who, for his career, doesn't have great postseason numbers in general. He has great postseason moments. Game five of the NLCS, three-run home run off of Will Smith, the five-hit game against the Padres. But overall in the postseason, he has had some struggles, and I think they'll consider that as well. If you look at Will Smith's career in the postseason, four years, nine series, has a 204 batting average and a 654 OPS, five home runs and eight doubles. So Will Smith can be streaky at times, too. He hits the ball hard. Want to see him be a part of this, and it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him as far as the lineup. But uh, David Sabatini, appreciate you. A lot of love from New York, DMAC. What up, David Sabatini? That's a, that's a comment of the game presented by our friends over at Hornito. Uh, Cesar, Perfect. Roberts loves Ferguson a lot, doesn't he? He will keep him on the roster. Like I said, I'll say it one more time, he has yet to have a clean first inning in his last seven games. 
has not a clean inning, struggled with command. And when he struggled with command, you're seeing Miz up in the zone, especially arm side with the fastball and the curveball not hitting as well. His secondary pitches haven't been effective. So, yeah, I think Alex Vesia, he's had his struggles at times, but I still think that they want a matchup lefty in this bullpen for the postseason. I think that Alex Vesia, despite the fact that he can be erratic, sometimes he can basically give you three heart attacks in one inning. He's someone that I think will ultimately get a spot in this bullpen, and I think we look at the other guys, I mean, Michael Grove is someone who I think we should shine a light on today, too, because Michael Grove, when you look at his stuff, when you look at the stuff that he has, his ability, his upside, and the fact that, hey, he's someone who, last appearance, coming off the IL, he went two innings, had one walk and three punch outs, and he also looked really, really good tonight. I mean, tonight I thought that, or today, earlier in the day, I thought that he pitched very well. Grove ends up going inning and a third, had two strikeouts, allowed one hit. But what's impressing me with Michael Grove is the efficiency. He threw 19 pitches, threw 14 for strikes. And I think that's really the difference since he's been back. He's more confident in his stuff. I think he knows what's at stake as far as trying to play his way into that postseason bullpen. And you look at some of his at-bats, they're very impressive. McMahon, that slider to get him down the zone on the one-two pitch, it was phenomenal. And you're seeing him also evolve. I don't think he gets enough credit for continuing to work on that cutter as a way to get out lefties. And you look at the single he gave was on the slider, but he's getting more confidence on that slider. So you're talking about someone who's really four-seam fastball and curveball. Now you're seeing four-seam fastball, cutter, slider. He's kind of altering his pitch mix and really favoring that slider at the moment. So I definitely think Michael Grove should be under strong consideration to be in this postseason mix. But let me know down below. Are you guys as high on Michael Grove as I am? Because I look at the stuff. We know what plays up in the postseason. It's the ability to miss bats. Because when you miss bats, you take away some of the variation, right? You take away some of the doubt. You take away the chance that something bad can happen. When the ball's in play, bad stuff can happen, okay? The bad bit gods can either smile upon you or frown upon you. And that's why the pitcher's best friend is the ability to miss bats. Daniel G, $2. I appreciate you with the super chat over there. We got Freddie Free Man. Jason Yo, Diamond, every wait, place Ferguson perfect. pitches is Coors Field. That's from Jason Diamond. That's Finish. a bird. That's a, that's a roast. I like that. Steve A, hopefully Will Smith gets right for the playoffs. Steve A, exactly. I think that's definitely a big factor as well because last year in the postseason, he was hitting the ball hard, wasn't getting the results. Today, you just want to see him go on a tear, finish strong, go up to San Francisco, hopefully to end things and really just get himself in the right place before the postseason begins. Because tonight, Will Smith, he ends up going 0 for 5, had the one RBI on the sack fly later in the game, but 0 for 5 for Will Smith. And yeah, the contact, it just hasn't been hard. You're seeing him just struggle at the plate. It's not the Will Smith that we knew that earlier in the year we were talking about Will Smith as, okay, is this guy one of the best, not just ca hitting catchers in the league, is he one of the best hitters overall in the league? That's what people were saying about Will Smith early on. And you're seeing him top of the first inning, he lines out, and you're seeing the way they pitch him. A lot of stuff on the outer half of the plate. And you want to see him try to punish mistakes on the inner half, but, uh, yeah, four second, second inning, a second at bat, it was a forcing fastball outer half. He flies up to right. And you look at top of the fourth inning, his at bat, one, two pitch, cutter away, down and away, cutter down and away. He grounds to first. So you're seeing some of these at bats where you want to see him get into hitters counts where he can get something that he can drive, right? And a lot of times, like I said, that has been how pitchers have attacked him. And look, it's no secret. Once you start having success in this league, the iPad's going to be out. The film room is going to be explored. You're going to be broken down and they're going to try to find the best ways to try to get to you, to try to make sure that you don't do damage against them because, look, it's no secret. Teams know that Will Smith is a great hitter and he has the potential to ruin a game for you, right? So... And that's why I think there's more of an emphasis on trying to stop him and trying to get him out. And then later in the sixth inning, 
I mean, the sixth inning, it was a, an encouraging at bat. It was a 12 pitch at bat. He fouled off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pitches. He goes down in the hole, 0 and 2, fouls off one, two, three, four, five pitches. Then the eighth pitch takes a slider down the zone for ball one. Then on the next pitch, he takes a four seam up and away for ball two, fouls off two more pitches. And then on the 12th pitch, forcing fastball on the inside corner, he misses it swinging. So that's a pitch. That's the concern for me is he's missing forcing fastball on the inner half right in the corner there. That's the pitch that we've seen Will Smith handle. That's the pitch that we've seen him drive for extra base hits and home runs. And, yeah, the home run total is just not there right now. And the extra base hits are few and far between. Then later in the seventh inning, it was good to see him get a sack fly there and – Second pitch slider away, he hits a sack fly to center. So, yeah, I'll be very interested to see how he looks for the next couple of weeks because he just has to adjust and find a way to kind of get out and make better contact with those pitches on the outer half. But, yeah, it's definitely concerned. Any theories as to why you guys think Will Smith isn't having the same amount of success in the second half of the season? Concern low for Ferguson's an eight. Can't trust Vesia. That's some Strider here. You won 20. Joe Durango Miller had as many walks as the Padres have trophies. I love that. That's a fire take. Fire take. Fire take. Finish him. We got Furry getting the black eyed peed. Uh, we got, uh, I'm on an eight and a half on the scale for concern for Ferguson. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, Fergie made better pitches. I think per- Fergie had better pitches, had a better pitch when she sang the national anthem than some of the pitches that Ferguson had today, right? I mean, just the location's not there. DMAC, SF equals season finished. Also, San Diego equals still disappointed. That's a that's a burn. Sure. I want to see Doc do the Freddy from Kevin Yuha's D-Max father. Ironically, Austin Barnes is doing better than Will Smith right now. Yeah, but look, the reality is that you still need the da- you need the possibility. The potential of Will Smith is still higher. The ceiling in the postseason, if things start to click for him, I think it's still worth definitely investing in him and making sure that he's someone that you uh, feel good about. Uh, we got. Uh, we got uh, DMAC. What is your what is your World Series? Who is this? Uh, uh, Dodgers fan Noah G. Doug, what is your World Series matchup? Good question. I uh, would say I want – I kind of want to see – Kind of want to see the Dodgers versus the Rangers. Rangers are hot right now. Got Corey Seager. We know the Dodgers have had success in that ballpark. I think that would be interesting. I don't really want to see a Tampa Bay rematch. I think the Orioles would be kind of cool because if we made it that far, of course, it would be a lot of young players on this team that would have success and help get us there. And then the Orioles, of course, a lot of young talent on that team. I think that would be cool. But, yeah, why not let's go Dodgers-Rangers right now. Subject to change, though. Subject to change. But, uh, yeah, if we get to the World Series, we're winning, man. That's a wrap. You just got to find a way to be. The World Series is going to be the NLCS. Pod- Braves, Dodgers, that's the World Series, the NLCS. Wasn't Will Smith plunked pretty bad by a pitch? Yeah, he has been dealing with some stuff. And that and that is uh, definitely been a factor and something that you have to talk about because it's the truth. I mean, players play through injury. It happens, Okay. And he's someone that has dealt with some injuries that uh, affected his swing. So it'll be interesting to see if he can get to full strength. But I think that he's almost there. I think that he's 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 far he's closer than you might realize because Dave Roberts said it a few weeks ago that that impacted his swing. That impacted his swing with how he was doing with the injury. So. He's he's he just kind of had some bad luck. I mean, there's been some bad luck with some of these injuries, and of course, he had the concussion a few times early on in the year. And the swing and miss is the concerning part because he's swinging and missing at balls we've seen him drive in the past. So it uh, we need him to to get right for sure. But uh, yeah, more thoughts on Bobby Miller. I think that Bobby Miller's got it, man. I think that Bobby Miller has got that game one start as a lock. I don't think that that gives the Dodgers the best chance to win. I think when you consider what this team has meant 
for to him and for him and how he's really carried this team through stretches. This is his fifth time in his last nine starts that he's pitched at least seven innings. He's been outstanding as a rookie when you consider the fact that he was thrusted into this situation prematurely and essentially the Dodgers, they fast-tracked him. They fast-tracked him into being an ace and tonight his line, seven innings of work, seven hits, two earned run, no walks, nine punch outs, 91 pitches, 66 for a strike. So let's break down Bobby Miller's outing a little more in depth here. And the career high nine strikeouts, no walks, and Coors Field, so, so impressive. It's only allowed a couple of runs across those seven innings, two runs on those 91 pitches. And you're seeing him continue to grow, continue to improve that swing and miss. And what really stood out to me from Bobby Miller's outing today was the effectiveness of that four-seam fastball. Of his nine punch-outs, six came via that four-seam fastball. Let's take a look at some Bobby Miller highlights right here. That's actually Pepio. Look at that Bobby Miller. Look at that. Oh, uh, four-seam fastball up in the zone. Look at that slider, just dirty. Chase, getting the chase. Look, we're getting down. Got a call there, but still... You're seeing him get that four-seam fastball looking bottom of the zone and also getting the four-seam fastball chase top of the zone, just overpowering hitters. That is going to work in the postseason. Also got two double plays tonight that really helped his cause bottom of the fourth. Got Diaz to ground to a double play. And then later he got uh, – he got uh, – Rodgers to ground to a double play with the slider. So he's someone that uh, that uh, only really the only bad only only runs gave today. He gave up that home run to Montero in the fourth inning. It was a first pitch changeup. He left it up. I think that one. You can almost blame Coors. I mean, it just kind of hung there. And that, to me, was the adjustment. I was so impressed by his ability to make those adjustments because the changeup has been his best pitch. The changeup has been a pitch that he's relied on all season long. Tonight, he throws just 12 changeups through only 13% of the time. He went primarily with that four-seam fastball and then slider, curveball, changeup, and sinker. They were all pretty even. They were all pretty even. That just shows he's got a true five-pitch mix. He's got so many clubs in that bag and that is what you love about Bobby Miller is he can keep hitters off balance with an array of pitches that he's not afraid to use in any count. I think that's really been the difference for Bobby Miller. I think he's big time. I think he's ready for this moment. I think that it's going to be very exciting to see a, a rookie pitcher in game one. Let's not forget Larry Sherry. I mean, he's still World Series MVP, 1959, rookie. Fernando Valenzuela, lots of young pitchers have gone on to have prominent roles for this Dodgers team. And I think that you're going to see Bobby Miller has a big, big opportunity to be the next one. I spoke to Adrian Gonzalez a few weeks ago, and I asked him, I said, well, the Dodgers will win the World Series if, and he told me, if Bobby Miller can be the ace, we all know that he's capable of being. So, that tells you right now that the buzz in the organization is about Bobby Miller. Is there anyone here that doesn't want to see him as the game one starter? Let me just ask that real quick down below. We got, uh, did I hear right? Kirsch will start game one, NLDS, Miller game two, then Lynn game three. I would put Pepio ahead of Lynn and have Miller start. What are your thoughts, DMAC? Let's see. Did Dave Roberts confirm that after the game? Because if he did, that would be very interesting. And the thought process there is that, look, they understand that. Let me make sure. Is that uh, I did, did he actually? He, there's no way he confirmed that, right? Because that just doesn't seem seem likely. But uh, let's see here. Let me make sure. Do 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 do. Yeah, I didn't see any confirmation of that. Let's go all the way down. Hey, DMAC, do you listen to well, – hey, DMAC, what do you listen to on your way to Dodger Stadium? DCAM, you just listen to – man, it depends. If I'm listening to podcasts, usually I'm listening to Jim Rome, Colin Cowherd, Dan Patrick, PFT Live, Baseball Tonight with Buster Olney, The Athletic Baseball Show. Uh, what else? What other podcasts do I listen to? Yeah, I get, uh, B um, Bill Burr's podcast, Monday morning podcast, uh, Pat McAfee's show. I listen to so many podcasts. Joel Klatt's show, Travis and Sleep, my partner in my other show sometimes around the horn PTI. Yeah, it uh, doesn't stop. Music-wise, though, you know, Wu-Tang Clan, 
with Tupac, Biggie, whatever it is. The Beatles, um, good old Jim Rowe, Anthony King. Dodgers offense need to go beast mode this year like Phillies did last year. Who do you guys think will play? That's from Alejandro Gonzalez. We got Kershaw should be the number one spot. He has more experience than most people on the field, and he still has the nasty stuff. I think, look, for me, when it comes to to uh, – to the experience thing, yeah, I think you have to factor in, though, who do you want? It's not about oh, game one this, game one that. It's about who you want to have in game five. And if Kirsch doesn't have it, right, and let's say he gets re-injured or he has a setback or he doesn't have the feel for his slider and he's throwing 88-mile-per-hour meatball heaters, then you're in a position where you're not set up as nicely later in the series if the series goes deep. So, yeah. It's going to be interesting. Dave would never commit to a starter in game one this early, George. Oh, yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? A D-Max father, number one, Miller, two, Kershaw, three, Pepio, four, Lynn, and Miller. That sounds about right. I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Yarbrough and who they want to piggyback him with. I think you probably could see Yarbrough there in the Pepio start, possibly Kershaw. I think that one is guaranteed almost at this point. You're going to see a Kershaw, Sheehan, piggyback situation with those contrasting styles with the variations there so yeah i think it kind of just depends really on on how they feel but the way it's lined up right now just look at the schedule you're probably going to see bobby miller it's not like it's a big widely held secret there and look the reality is that miller just continues to pitch very very well and he's going to pitch one more time he's going to probably pitch in their dodgers regular season finale of course this Sunday, and I think he's going to get the ball in game one. Tonight, seven innings of work, six hits, two runs, and nine strikeouts. Like I said, the four, that's the biggest thing you need to know about his start tonight was that four-seam fastball with the perceived rise. I know he gets compared to Walker Buehler a ton, but tonight – that's when, to me, he really felt like Walker Buehler because he was dominating hitters with the four-seam fastball. And he doesn't need to throw 100. And sometimes when you see him take a tick off that velocity, the command's better, which allows him to get ahead in the count, which allows him to use those nasty out pitches. So I also, too, just look, we can get into the numbers as deep as you guys want to get. But I think for me, just eye test-wise, he definitely has probably some of the best mound presence, some of the most confident demeanor his demeanors as more as some of the most confident vibes i've felt on that mound in a quite a long time since 2018 walker Beeler, right someone that comes up and says look i don't care how old i am i don't care that i'm a rookie i don't care that i'm on the dodgers look this is my ball i'm going to intimidate hitters you saw the breakdown i did with zach mckinstry so get to first you know at this you know like i mean this guy is not afraid of anyone he will challenge hitters doesn't matter which part of the plate so that's why i think that he's a to get that opportunity but yeah a couple other interesting notes tonight if you look at this offense kind of diving into the box score here wow 57 and 100 the rockies you are an embarrassment that rockies team that rockies franchise they just need to move man i'm telling you they got to relocate go to see go to portland man go do something but you got to get the heck up out of there it just does not work the fifth ring of hell known as coors field but uh we tonight if you look at the box score Freddie goes two for four. Taylor goes one for five. Muncie three for four. Alvin four for six. Kika had a nice night. He goes three for five. Had an RBI there. Had a double. And then Peralta one for six. So that's nothing we need to talk about before we head out. David Peralta he goes one for six. Did have two RBI. It was nice to see him get off to a good start in this one early on. He puts the Dodgers on the board there in the top of the second inning after an Outman single couple batters later Peralta he singled to left on a 3-1 count 14 fastball bottom of the zone that put the Dodgers up two to nothing but David Peralta yeah he definitely has had a rough go of it of late you wonder if he's fully held if he's dealing with something because he was someone that was one of the more consistent hitters in the sport for a two-month stretch there but he has really started to crater of late I mean this month heading into tonight's game who's hitting 167 in September Last month, he had 254 in August. Before that, 275 in July. So 
I still want him on this roster. I think it's a lock. Colton Wong, he went two for four, made the nice defensive play there on that double play, him to Rosario, to Freddie Free. But I still think Peralta is someone who, when he's on, when he's at its best, he's making contact. And that's something that this team lacked last year in the NLDS. But what are your thoughts on that? Do you guys think you would rather see Colton Wong, Anthony Keene, how's my fantasy football team doing? In one league, I'm dominating. The other league, I'm struggling. In the other league, I'm just kind of okay. But it's a long year. Got a good squad. Nick Chubb, he got injured, so I'm not feeling that. But uh, I got Jalen Hurd, so we got uh, we got a squad. But uh, not really. Lynn has that veteran experience and seems to be back on track. Pepio was two months of antacid. We got Hurt is hurting. Dodgers should have given Kyle Hurt more opportunities. I trust him to eat innings and miss bats. Yeah, Kyle Hurt is someone you guys know I advocated for him to get that opportunity. At this point, it's like, what do you have to lose when you're entering the postseason where the expectations are a little down? They're still the Dodgers, but I don't think anyone would freak out. They lost the Braves, right? And tonight, he was so impressive. I don't know if you guys saw highlights of him tonight he started in a playoff series for triple a he went four innings had eight punch outs three walks gave just two hits he touched 97.5 miles per hour he was in the zone all night so yeah that there was change up 50 percent of the time had a 66 percent whiff rate so this is someone who he's he's built on the confidence of that first appearance and i would absolutely like to see him get a get a look but there's not enough spots right i mean it'll be interesting to see i mean lance lynn we'll see if they think that yeah you don't need you know four starters for the nlds right i mean lance lynn if they don't think they can use him in a short burst capacity or they're not going to use as a starter maybe you go with another young live arm versus a lance lynn who who would you try i don't want him any 100 feet close to the mound against the Atlanta Braves. That would terrify me. So we still have a lot to shake out. Tomorrow we're going to spend – we're going to drop a video with a postseason – my postseason roster. I'm going to drop that tomorrow, my early prediction on it. But uh, that is going to do it for this episode of the Dodgers Nation post game show. You trust Grove over Hurt from Mike M. Good question. I think Grove has had his moments. He's dealt with some home run issues. Hurt just has – very, very little experience. Of course, just two innings at the big league level. I think Grove, what he's shown me lately, it feels like he is higher on the pecking order. Who's the Dodgers' most underrated player? D-Mac, David Sabatini. That's an easy, easy answer to me. It's Max Muncy. Max Muncy would be a iconic player for most organizations. He's already up there when it comes to all-time Dodgers and home runs. Max Muncy in his career with the Dodgers this season at 120 weighted runs created plus 36 bombs 103 rbi and a lot of that is because you got freddie freeman and and mookie always on base but yeah absolutely i would say max muncie of course his defense is suspect at times there's no doubt about that but as far as offensive production he deserves a lot of credit and that's one of the reasons why i'm confident in this team in the postseason is because you got max muncie in October, and he's fully healthy. I talked to Dave Roberts of last week about it. He said it's going to be huge. It's going to be very important to have a healthy Max Muncy. So that definitely does not go unnoticed by me. What happened to Blue Heaven Podcast 2275? It was Yom Kippur. So we observed that holiday. So that's why we did not go live, and we will be live again on Thursday. So stay tuned. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Dodger Nation Post Game Show. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. Mm-hmm.